Support for today's show comes from Fallout 76. Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. Work together or not to survive. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th. Pre-order now at participating retailers and play the beta. Games play best on Xbox One. Oh, hello. How, uh, how was your, uh, your, where were you again? I was in New Orleans. Oh, that's right. It's that's me right. who talks about travel this time. <laughs> I did it. I left the state. Do I go to New Orleans next? <laughs> yeah, we all, we all have to that's make a trip. <laughs> that's the law. We have to do it separately, <laughs> not together. That's bird ball right there. <laughs> yep. Uh, I make it so. Uh, good. You have a good time? It's good the word you used to describe the time you had. Yeah, it was very fun. It was like I did I did a lot of sleeping. I slept more than I've slept in the last like four years. Like each night it was great. But I also did a ton of walking around and a ton of drinking. And it was really, really fun. And New Orleans is really cool. I think it was a good city. And I feel like I hit perfect weather while I was there. And um, I would say, let's see, one, two, I'd say like, I'd say like, Nine out of 10 hurricanes I drank, I actually really enjoyed. And one was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the horrifying one was the largest and made me feel like I was going to die. But all in all, hurricanes up. There you go. I had a four rum hurricane when I was there. You know what? That's too many different types of rum. I, I was like, ah, oh, too many oh, rum flavors at the same yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I thought you meant just like there was four shots or whatever, but four different. That's gross. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's too much. I had a Victorian secret, which is a uh, secret order from a secret menu on one of those bars where it's just the frozen beverages along one wall and nothing else. <laughs> so in case you were wondering, you can have cool secret drink orders from that place. It was like pina colada, the oh shit, the strawberry nickname was, but like the strawberry daiquiri, I think. And then the 190 octane, which is like orange. And it's all the frozen beverage blended together and it tastes so good and it'll mess you up. Sounds terrifying. What's this show about? Welcome to Crucible Radio. (laughs) Hey folks, it's us. Those guys. (laughs) Those drunks. Uh, Well, wait, which one of us is the drunk? Burns is the drunk one. Me this time. You're the other guy. I traveled. I went to New Orleans. I can be the other guy. Welcome to the show, everyone. We're the show for all things Destiny, something, 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 PvP, and uh, we're just some dang old boys playing a little Crucible together, or separately. That's we're us playing Crucible. Dang old boys. <laughs> dang old boys. Well, Bones, you've been you've been traveling, but um, you got a little Crucible in the mix there. What have you been up to? Yeah, uh, it's kind of funny. I didn't really intentionally plan to take a seven day break from the game right after we talked about that uh, a couple of weeks ago, but it felt really good actually uh, to rest my wrists. And then I came back and I'm still in this zone. And I know I've already mentioned it, but I feel so good and I feel really, really like I'm really enjoying myself with uh, a fighting lion build. And I'll still put Lunas on. I think that's fun. I've got a decent mind benders, so I'll mix it up. You'll lay ace of spades, but I would say 80% of my games are with Fighting Lion now. Uh, and I'm pairing an, an, uh, an SMG. I've got Toil and Trouble. I've got a sniper rifle in the kinetic slot. All three of those result in really fun stuff with that gun. And I just master worked it. It feels great. But the fun for me now has been putting together armor loadouts that pair well with this with this gun. And I think there's you know, differences across the three classes, but I still like using Fighting Lion with that. So for example, on my Warlock, I have a Ophidian Aspect back on because you do a sure. lot of reloading with that loadout, even when you do get the perk to Brock and that sort of thing. Um, Hunter, I'm officially like 
finally chose an exotic. I'm wearing the Dragon's Shadow. It's so good now. Uh, if you put Dynamo on your legs, I know it got changed a little bit, but it's still very strong. You get that dodge constantly. And to be able to instantly reload your fighting line and a shotgun, uh, which can take forever if you got a lot of ammo and stuff, is is really great. Plus the fast swap. It's a perfect fit for that loadout completely. And uh, on the on my Titan, which I've been playing the most, actually, I'm leveling up all those subclasses and stuff, but Top Tree Sentinel, I think, is one of the strongest builds we've still ever seen in Destiny and have yet to be seen. Um, it's so strong, and I use Syntheseps right now because I haven't got any of the new hotness, but Syntheseps with the Top Tree that gives overshield and health back on melee is insane. You get that long stretch to punch, get your health back so you can just do it at re in really high risk scenarios or just blunt force with a fighting lion and even take damage from that grenade yourself. But as long as you finish with that melee with a good reach, you're fine. Um, and then that uh, overshield actually gives you faster handling and reload and stuff like that. So it's just like the perfect setup and getting legs with, you know, I have a, this, oh, this great perk. I know what it was a dynamo and perpetuation. That one, that one got nerfed. So people are upset, but oversized weapon dexterity is <laughs> so good. It applies to rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and shotguns. Those are considered oversized. So if I'm using toil and trouble and fighting lion, I've got weapon dexterity for both of those. I got Fantastic. lucky. Uh, so I also bones went through birds spreadsheet this week. And cleaned out yeah, my wall. Buddy. That's Two second, plugs. Second time in one episode. Um, <laughs> but I found out that I had a Reverie Dawn mark that has uh, Absolution, which was pretty hey, sweet. Hey, nice. That's a good one. And, uh, you know, kind of went through. I have a perfect chest piece. I've got a good helmet. So I have a lot. I, I, need, I need new boots. That's probably the only thing. But just a reminder that all of the Reverie Dawn and the uh, great hunt stuff is the best the best things you can get my titan just got to uh the dreaming city last night <laughs> hey that's, <laughs> Whoa, that's fun for you. finally did that stupid public event in the wherever it is i accidentally did one last night i know the uh top tree sentinel is good but i had something happen with the middle tree sentinel the other night it was at the end of a countdown round that we'd won They'd dropped, uh, the enemy had dropped a Titan shield there and he was in his super. He still had some super left. And so he immediately did the deflector shield and put it through the Titan barricade and just started spewing orbs out. <laughs> and I went and got like half my super just standing next <laughs> to him dancing his orbs rain on me. It was awesome. Thank you, stranger. <laughs> cool trick. Yeah. You ever got, you ever got a little bit of super left over and you're playing that, that, that commander makes some orbs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, new new Sentinel is definitely cool and and definitely good. Um, I've only just unlocked it, so I'll I'll get a feel for it. But yeah, just the pairing with the, with my go to exotic gear and top tree that me that melee is so stupid strong. Uh, it's it's very good. But I'm excited to to finally finally get to some of these subclasses that I've just been painstakingly leveling up or unlocking. It's good. Bones, have you gotten any exotics this week? Well, I did return. I missed a whole seven days of this new drop rate, which made me really sad while on vacation. I'm just occasionally checking Discord, but I did get two tailed fox to drop. So uh, a little tough and competitive. I know it's a little weird in Crucible because of that delay on the rockets, but that's the coolest effect on any rocket launcher I've ever seen. It's very fun, and I got this absurd tracking kill in Gambit like not expecting it to work all, at all. So I think it's a fun, cool gun for sure. And then I did get the Antaeus wards on my Titan. I used them for one game and I don't want to mess with it right now. <laughs> Maybe when I'm really running low on content, I'll give those another shot. But I put in a lot of time on Titan just so I can get any of those other ones. So <laughs> yeah, a lot to get, a lot to get. Driving me a little insane, but I'm feeling better. Birds, how is your week going? I thought you'd never ask Bonesy. Um, Why would no, you think that? Good. You asked me to ask you. Oh, <laughs> <continue>. <laughs> hey, Andrew, you fucking cut that out. <laughs> no, leave it in. <laughs> uh, no, uh, my week is going is is going good. I have um, I have ex 
almost exclusively been playing the comp playlist for almost three weeks now. And uh, I, you know, I haven't been playing a ton, but it's been great. I've just been grinding out the steps on the uh, the Luna's Howl quest. Um, almost done. Got my last couple uh, precision hand cannon kills and then um, uh, like 1,500, 1,600. So last little bit of grind to do. Nice. Um, I've got to say, I really like the comp playlist. I could take or leave countdown at this point. I know that is an uncommon take. Leave it. But uh, yeah, I you know what you know what it is. I just don't like revive modes. I just don't like not being able to contribute. And it's like I understand it's good. You know, just not for me, right? Like it can be good to have a game mode where it's about punishing mistakes, right? So like they push too far, we punish the mistake. Now we have an advantage and the round sort of goes predictably from there. But yeah, I like the fast pace. I like the action. Um, but I got to say, I've, I've just really been digging it. I've enjoyed the solo queue quite a bit. I feel like it's not been difficult to win most lobbies up through 1500 on PC where I happen to live. It's been pretty rare that I've run into a four stack that was like a competitive four stack versus like there's nothing quite as satisfying as beating a four stack when when it's all solo queue. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it's been good. I feel like I'm really getting my head around the pacing of these game modes. And let me tell you, on Cammy's advice, I pulled out a sidearm. I pulled out um, an anonymous autumn and I've actually been just like loving the the crucible gear grind. Cause I love getting a new role on a better devils or an anonymous autumn. Um, and I, my main one has got range finder. It's got armor piercing rounds and threat detector on it with a stability masterwork. Uh, first off it's orange with the dark fluorescence shader, which is the best color of shader. But like, I don't know, man, this sidearm is just fun. It's just fun. You just like stay at just outside of shotgun range and back pedal. And people are like, Running to get you. They can't get you. <laughs> Going back. It's great. I like it. I, I, I wanna I wanna get one that pushes the range out as far as possible. I would like to have as much range as possible. And I'm still waiting for that that perfect sidearm. But um yeah. Can I, don't I know. tell you about mine birds? Fun type. Oh yeah, what, what what do you like? I just I just masterworked it, which is a huge waste of resources. You, you got all those master extra masterwork cores, apparently. Yeah, I used fifty percent of them to do this, but I've got cool. the smuggler's word. Okay, with ricochet rounds, quick Great. draw, and rampage. That's pretty good. With that's the range good. masterwork. There you go. See, that solid. That is worth spending all those masterwork cores on. Yeah, I mean, and it's got like. Good strong stats. The with the masterwork, it hits seventy one range with like perfect recoil direction. And the reason rampage actually feels fine is because I do play with fighting lion so often. So it's a really fast switch. It's got quick drop built in on top of every other perk I just mentioned. Um, and it's usually just like one tap, one or two little bursts because it's that two burst. So that just procs rampage immediately. You barely used any of your magazine, and if there's someone else immediately in front of you. You can swap right back to Fighting Lion, or you can just plow through with Rampage, and it, it works out. It's just a good good little gun. It's a good little gun. It's got to, I have to say, it's been interesting being out of the special anim, ammo economy mm, yeah. game. Like, seeing a green brick and going like, oh, I'm going to go get that. And then they're like, oh, wait, I, I don't need it. I guess my teammate can have it. But just, yeah, like, never being out of ammo. The feeling of going nice. from, like, eight to maybe four fighting lion shots and picking up the white brick of ammo and going to 14 is incredible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so just it like, Oh boy, get ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to tell you, um, a phase of the comp grind I was not expecting to be so fucking frustrating was the solar kills. Cause it's just like, mm. all right, hop into dim. I'm playing on my warlock. So it's like, I switched to Dawnblade. I played plenty of Dawnblade. I know how it works. <laughs> Hop into dim, put on the the is solar, and then like look and go like I don't actually have all that many so like I feel like Bonesy when you got me doing the insane vault cleaning I didn't quite factor in that I might want some stuff in each element because that was <laughs> I think the the thing that got me using this this sidearm um, yeah not a lot of 
Not a lot of options. I had a hand in hand that was solar. So I was like, okay, that's, that's the that's one. A gun. I can use <laughs> the, it. My year one uh, play of the game, which is just worse than my year two one, but I had to just take it out to use it because that's what, what I was using. Yeah, it works. No, I was, I was kind of surprised to like see how frustratingly limited I did play a couple good games with sky burners. So, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. Use one games in comp with sky burners and you can now cross that off the old bucket list. That's okay. Um, Next season it'll be void and everyone will have the same weird void loadouts. Yeah, that's I, I can work with void. I, I'll tell you what, I did uh, I did try and get down with sunshot. I can't fuck with sunshot. I can't. Like it's just it's hard to see what's going on. There's yeah. like explosions, reticles kind of hard to use. I just Compared to Ace of Spades, which I don't know, I've been back for it. I'm I'm in Ace of Spades now. I get it. It's good. I, <laughs> it's just right on time. Two months late. I uh, super into it. Yeah, Sunshot. It's just weird. I don't know. Did you know that Ace of Spades has a recoil direction stat of 100? Uh, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I know who's clicking around in dim right now. I'm just shocked. It's like hard to get that on a hand cannon if you're not talking like Luna's Hal, but. It's just a really good gun, you guys. I don't know if you knew that. It's mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really <laughs> Yeah, okay. Anyways, enough enough birds talk. Swain, how you doing, man? What's been going on? Oh man, I have had a great week. You got your Destiny. meatballs. I've got my meatballs. <laughs> I am now. It was I think it was maybe an hour after recording the last episode. I got Dredgen, so I finished that grind. Mm-hmm. Um, Swain, I have to say, um, I have to say, because you got the Dredgen title, I now know how to say Dredgen. I finally had to realize it wasn't Dregden. Yeah, I thought it was for a while too, and then yeah, yeah, changed your name it's, to Discord, and I was like, right, that doesn't look right. I should look that up. It's right, right there the in your one. face, Dredgen. Yeah, Dredgen. Um, it's not. It feels good to have one of those little titles. Not a That's lot of cool, people man. do, and it's a. Uh, I do see a. I'll, I see more dredgens than the other ones, but still. Um, Dredgen seems attainable. I see a lot of people with Wayfair and think like I know what is required for Wayfair. That is, <laughs> <laughs> I get it, but I looked at it and I'm like, fuck, I'm never getting this. <laughs> you want to know which one? What, what like fucks me up is like I feel like there's five people I consistently queue into comp lobbies with who've wear the seventh column emblem mm, and they've got one. like seven, eight, nine, double digit seventh columns. Like, so that one's I misleading. Get all these seventh columns. That's misleading because on the little shortened version, when you see on your en- enemies or, or teammates or something like that, it'll only tell you seventh columns, but that adds up all of your golden medals. So, uh, an- Okay, yeah, because I got that one. So they all just show up under seventh column. Yeah, because that's the first yeah. one. So it's a seventh column. Oh, we ran that's out. That's misleading. Some that's of all misleading. tears and annihilation. And annihilation is actually a, uh, a, the easiest one to get, and especially in the comp playlist where you get that that four piece and wipe out the team. You get an annihilation. So that's really how people are stacking that number. But it looks it looks good. Put it on your comp character so your teammates <laughs> get intimidated. Man, I mean, other than finishing that uh, grind up. I still played a bunch of Gambit. I had fun uh, playing it afterwards. Uh, I am starting down that comp path. I played a little Mm -hmm. bit of solo earlier and got my Queen Breakers. So I'm going to go back to Gambit for a while. (laughs) Um, (laughs) No, I, I mean, two games before recording tonight, and it's silly. It's a silly gun. And I feel like if if someone in our crew deserved to get it, you needed that Queen Breakers, man. That was it Swain feels D1 right. was Mr. Mr. Queen Breaker. It feels right. It almost feels too fast. I'll say that much. Um <laughs> oh, it shoots think? so fast. <laughs> um I mean you can get I there was points where I was using it like just double body shotting people because I know like how fast it was going. So like if you miss a headshot, don't worry. Shoot another one. <laughs> it <laughs> happens so fast. Um, other than that, uh, I have been testing out something that uh, one of our sponsors sent us this week, and that is Scuff. 
our scuff sponsor uh, sent me the Vantage, which is their new PS4. Currently, it's only PS4 controller. Um, similar to the Impact a little bit, but it's got this like weird Xbox lo- uh, layout that's kind of like high on the left side, the left stick, um, where you would find it on like an Elite controller. Uh, it's still spread out kind of similar to a PS4 controller, but played some Spider-Man with it. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I did a little bit of Destiny with it as well. Um, and I'm digging it. It's, a uh, like I said, Scuff makes a good controller. They It's got the four paddles on the back, um, and it's got, like, the a lot of removable parts, so you can kind of do your own thing with it. Uh, you can put in different uh, height thumbsticks. You can swap them really easily. Um, it does. It's not like the uh, like the other ones where you gotta take out that like ring and like replace it through the ring. This literally just like the faceplate pops off, and you can put rumbles in. You can take rumbles out. You can swap around the different face like uh, thumbsticks, the different um, directional pad, all that. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice and light too. So, I, let, well, let me ask you about this. So, with the the position of the thumbsticks, was that like an easy transition? Did that feel natural, or did it take some getting adjusted to? I don't know. It feels a little bit better in general because, like, you're, you're not putting your your thumbs so close together, and you are kind of like having everything real comfortably in one place on the left side. You're not like your, your thumb's not too far away from your other two fingers. Yeah, and overall, I would say it didn't really phase me all that much, like, adjusting to it. Um, I do still prefer the uh, impact a little a little more. Uh, and I would say that's mostly because if it's, uh, like, customized, like, you can customize it to make it the way you want it to look. Uh, and you can get really ugly with it, like Birds does. <laughs> you know what I like. Um I did ask though that they they the removable faceplate on the Vantage, uh, they're gonna eventually have ones that you can just purchase, like different colors and everything. Right now, it comes in just the one bluish gunmetal gray color, um, and they do sell it like just straight up at GameStop. It is the PS4 like approved uh, alternate controller. I guess the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Well, so this one has got the four paddles on the back, and I have not. My my scuffs all are the two paddle paddle one. Um, you dig the four paddles? What do you have mapped to? I have it like all of the square, X, circle, triangle uh, mapped. Uh, I keep the X on the right, far right, and the circle on the far left. Those are the ones I use the most. Um, and on the inside, the it's triangle on the right and square on the left. Um, I don't do a lot of movement on the left, so I like to keep square there simply for, like, revives and picking up ammo and all that. You don't really have to, like, change your, you know, uh, finger around while you're, like, moving. Um, And obviously, if you don't have experience with the scuff, the panels are really the main reason to get one. Um, oh, it's it's to be it's able to jump changer. and like turn and move at the same time is just like it's just a whole nother level. And without it, I feel like I feel hamstrung <laughs> without yeah. the ability to do all that in a first person shooter. And uh, this one has got the side shoulder buttons as well. Yeah, I didn't get to really use them much because uh if only accidentally, if I've pressed sure. it. Um, but they're currently, I think they're the R2s. Like, they, they kind of do the same thing. So, like, the one on the right shoots the gun. And I could see how, like, for a certain, like, play style, that might be a decent addition, but they don't really get in the way if you don't really use them at And there's no little magnetic thing to switch the buttons. It's literally just a switch on the bottom and you can remap your paddles to whatever. Oh, and then you switch no the thing kidding. back. Interesting. Yeah. 
Cool. So, uh, obviously, this has been uh, sent to us by our uh, sponsor, Scuff. And if you are interested in this or the Impact or anything else, they do uh, Xbox controllers as well. Um, and the Impact does work on PC. That's the one I use on PC. So, Impact is still a great controller. I've had mine for like almost two years now, and it's uh, it, it's awesome. It's like big and beefy and it's light, really too. solid. Super light. <laughs> it's light, but you can still kind of like, you know, like if you have a strong grip, which I know some people do. I do just naturally. <laughs> yeah, still solid. Use offer code Crucible when you're checking out and get five percent off your next order. It's a good offer one. code Crucible. All right. Well. I think it is time we got to this interview. This is a good one. This is, uh, well, this is somebody who um, I think is a is a pretty good uh, pretty good role model for a player. Just like a very solid, reliable, consistent force in the Crucible, and um, yeah, a lot of good stuff covered in this one. So uh, we're going to talk to our friend Kensta in just a sec. But before we do that, you know how it goes. Middle of the show. Let's go. Musical break. Sound familiar? It should, because this is Odd Folks. We have been playing their music on this show since the very beginning. You heard their album, Monica. You heard their album, Bruiser. Well, their new album is out now. It is called Alumni, and it is excellent. So go listen to it. It's on Bandcamp, oddfolks.bandcamp.com. We've got it on repeat here, and you're going to be hearing it over the next couple weeks. So, uh, yeah, go show them some love. They're, 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 they're the best. And, uh, hey, I've got a couple new music submissions I haven't even listened to yet. I love it so much. Here's how it works. We play listener music on the show. So if you are in a band, if you're a producer, if you're a singer or a rapper or someone who just puts together some tunes in their spare time, we want to hear them. So, hey, send it over. CrucibleRadio at gmail.com. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We have a very special guest this week on the show. It's his first time appearing. He's a good friend of ours and a great player as well. Please welcome Kensta to the show. What's up, man? How's it going, everyone? Golf clap. Yeah. Golf clap. Yeah. yeah, everyone, golf clap. Pleasure to be here, guys. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, of course. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So let's start off by uh, doing the, the old classic. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself and how you got into Destiny. All right, so a little bit about myself. Kensta, of course. Um, favorite color, birthday. Yeah, let's go. My favorite color, black. <laughs> okay, black. all right. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so how I got into Destiny, I played the beta way back, I believe on PlayStation 3. And then I wow. moved on to PlayStation 4. And I just loved, I enjoyed the, the community, the, the game. Hunters. I don't know what you guys <laughs> like the most, but I love Hunters. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when they released Trials of the Cyrus, that got my heart pumping. I, I loved the competitive scene where they had three versus three. Um, made you sweat a lot. So honestly, I think that's how it got to me. Um, mm-hmm. and how Destiny got to me and how I just got into it. Have you always approached shooters as sort of like, you know, with that competitive mindset, just, you know, trying to, trying to be the best, trying to find a, a stressful situation and, <laughs> and win it out? Yeah. So way back in the past, I played Counter-Strike 1.6. I'm not sure if you guys have played that before. Um, but Pretty lighthearted, casual game. <laughs> Is that the one with all the, you chop the wood and then you build a ramp? No, it's like <laughs> But yeah, I used to play in um, Counter-Strike competitively, Cal League, um, World World Cyber Games pre-qualifier. We lost, but it was a good experience. 16-14 to, I think, if I remember correctly, 
the name of the team was uh, Girl Scout Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was a good experience. I also played in ESCA. So I did have that competitive mindset. Where it was like a five versus five, do all those call outs, things like that. Kensta, what's your favorite flavor of Girl Scout Cookies? <laughs> it's gonna be the mint. Ooh, it's a good, good choice. choice. It's a good <laughs> choice. You can't go wrong. <laughs> How about yours? Oh, mine's mint as well, but I know for a fact that a lot of people don't jive with mint all that much. So kind of wanted to get a feel for who you really were. <laughs> well, right. they also like they changed up the formula recently. Cause I would have said I would have said Samoas for a long time, but then they redid the Samoas. They're not the same. They're not as good they anymore. They definitely are not the same. Are those the caramel ones? With the coconut. Now it's... Oh, right, right. right. Coconut's okay. got like the chocolate drizzle. Yeah, the ones that are just like peanut butter inside or something like that, chocolate on the outside. That's good. I've been eating thin Oreos though, guys. Try those. They're thin good. Oreos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's like way less, of the, less cream. You just get a nice cookie bite, but it's also not like no, I feel, hard to eat. It's great. I, I feel like it's... <laughs> I feel like it's <laughs> like mostly the same amount of cream, but less cookie, which is why they're good. Because those cookies, default cookies, too thick. Well, Buns yeah. is like, it's like, oh, it's diabet. I'm gonna get <laughs> thin <laughs> Oreo, <laughs> not, not the full one. That's that's I'm on kind of die. <laughs> kind of thinking. Wait, yeah. Anyways, uh, Kensta, you are a <laughs> hunter main, as you've mentioned. What mm-hmm. about that that subclass first appeal to you? And you've been I, you've been playing arc staff basically the whole D two, right? Yes. Um, when I first started arc staff, it was the top tree. It, I don't remember the name of it. Was the top tree or the bottom tree? Anyways, I'm going to send you a link to a little old spreadsheet that I've got. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so for, plugs. For it's this weekly spreadsheet plugs plug. plugs and plugs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm trying to limit it to one per episode. Uh, The name of the top tree is Way of the Warrior. Yes, it was that one. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) You got it, bud. You got it. Oh, yeah. So I used Way of the Warrior for a bit. um, And then once Forsaken came out, I used Way of the Current. Now, Way of the Current, I enjoyed my favorite uh, ability was World Wind Guard, where... You know, while wielding your arch staff, you hold down your keybind to deflect incoming projectiles. Okay, let's let's talk about that one because I think I think that we are now at the time where subclasses are getting played out more and people are actually starting to get them. And if you look at our last two guests talking about, you know, the new Night Stalker tree, which everyone said was bad, uh, it's it's clear. But <laughs> this one has been like almost not talked about. So whirlwind guard, what sort of like, how do you use that effectively? Um, so pretty much it deflects projectiles, which will um, triple your arch staff damage for a short time. Mm-hmm. And if I remember correctly, it only lasts about, I think two seconds or three seconds. So it's not that long. Um but while blocking projectiles such as like you know bullets or certain supers like the golden gun or titan hammers, um, it can help you destroy multiple groups of enemies because it gives you a short duration of triple damage. So if you're fighting against other supers, you might be able to decimate other supers as well within the hmm. area. So this actually just happened to me like two days ago. I was uh, I was in a comp match. I was on my dawn blade. and I thought I had the round. It's like okay, he popped a super. I know he's got an arc strider. I got this big open spaces and I threw one sword at him and then like a very confusing thing happened, kind of missed what happened there. And I was like, Oh, that hurt. Let me throw another one and, uh, immediately bounced back and died. And, uh, I like, I just messaged him right after that. Like nice block, man. (laughs) That was funny, but I don't. So, so help me understand this. Like I was facing him, he was facing me and I threw the sword and it bounced back and hit me. When you're using this ability, is it like directional? Does it just turn things around in the direction they came in? Could you like bounce my sword into a different enemy? How does that work? From my experience, it does bounce all over the place. Uh, So if you have teammates around your area, you can probably just kill them too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. In case I felt like doing that. Okay, okay. (laughs) 
When you're using the super, I mean, are you mostly using it as a regular arc strider, but every now and then you figure, okay, well, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, counter the super and use that. Or are you specifically saving it? Like, I'm going to use this as a counter, like as a shutdown super the next time someone pops theirs. I guess it depends on the situation. So say if like you're, you're playing in comp and the opposing team has uh, Blade Barrage, you could definitely save it to deflect or block the Blade Barrage back at to uh, the person casting it or to maybe their teammates around the area to cause some damage. Um, so you can play defensively or even aggressively by attacking them. Makes sense. Makes sense. So yeah, there are multiple ways of playing uh, our Strider. Passive, aggressive, defensive. Do you think sort of, well, I guess like sort of along those lines, right? Like Arc Striders had some real highs and lows where it was, the beginning it was like, it's garbage, you can't close ground, no one is doing this right, I die right away. And then for a while it was like, oh, I'm running into four Arc Striders every time. And then it's kind of like <laughs> back to that now. Do you feel like sort of over that ebb and flow, it's changed how how you've played or like sort of what's effective and what isn't, or has it been more consistent than people think? So with way of the current, it did change the way I played because now I have to think now I have the option of blocking supers, which helps a lot. Um, previously in the past before forsaken, I couldn't block any supers. Um, I, I get, sometimes I get scared when I pop my arc I'll hide in the corner. If someone pops, pops that golden gun. Well, and it's like, it's, it's also, also not the, there's like a different vibe of the instant pop because I feel like that was my take on Arc Staff in the end of year one was that it just pops yeah. in your face and they can attack right away. Uh, do you still have that sort of like? Do you find that is the, still the uh, the move, or or do you sort of pop, you know, maybe in cover and then move out to attack, you know, versus just in someone's face? Uh, I would say pop in front of their face and wipe them out. That's my strategy. Um, sometimes they won't be expecting mm-hmm. it. So like in comp, you, you can check your radar, run really quickly into one area. If, if you see like, say a lot of reds on your radar, pop it right away and wipe them out. Um, that would give your team a big advantage and hopefully win the round. Hey guys, real quick. Once again, just got to remind you that support for today's show comes from Fallout 76. You know Bethesda Game Studios. They're responsible for Skyrim and all the other Fallout games. Fallout 4, you know, that one was this big open world with lots of things to discover. But here's another one in Fallout 76. But instead of NPCs, everyone in there is a real person. It's this massive multiplayer survival game. You can either work together or you don't have to. Maybe you're one of those people that, you know, doesn't want to team up with people. They want to cause havoc. I don't know. It's crazy. Do you, boo-boo. Yeah, just do you. Play how you want. That's the coolest thing. Uh, You can play solo or join together as you explore, quest, build, and triumph against the Wasteland's greatest threats. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th, but you can still pre-order now at participating retailers and play the beta. That's the B-E-T-A. That's an actual acronym this time for Fallout. It's a little it's a little Easter egg. I just won't tell you. Okay, anyways, games play best on Xbox One. Go check it out, folks. I was going to say, yeah, like, so, so talk through the mechanics of that a little bit, because like, lots of us have popped uh, an Arc Strider Super and then just immediately gotten melted. Like, Play it out, right? Like, let's say, you know, I know right around this corner, there's a bunch of red. I need to get in there. Are you popping it in the air and trying to close through the air and then slam down? Are you staying low and just dodging continually? Are you using cover? Are you just trying to cover as much ground as possible? Like, what's what's sort of the vibe of it? Uh, with Way of the Current, I've been popping it on the ground. So I would run really fast uh, through a corner so they, can, they can't see me. And I'll slide, pop. And when you pop your, your uh, super, you're going to have a little bit of a, what you might call it, a whirlwind guard um, to block incoming mm. projectiles, which provides you a you know, certain buff, mm. which will uh, chop your arc staff damage to wipe out their entire team. And if their opposing team pops, say, say a Nova Warp, you might have a chance to take down the Nova Warp with uh, that triple arc staff damage. Okay, so that's interesting. So I wasn't sure what difference the damage made, but it's when, it, when, you're, when you're against other supers or you're against an overshield where you need to, you need to like, deal with that damage reduction, that that's where it makes the difference. 
Yep. And you have, you know, two to three seconds to, to finish that. Yep. Yep. Okay. So are you, are you a hundred percent way of the current now? Yes, I am. You think it's hundred percent. You think it's the best or is that just you? (laughs) Uh, Honestly, it's more of just me and my own play style. I enjoy it. I find that it fits me and it works in the crucible. Fair enough. All right. Do you get much out of the uh, the neutral game, like that melee slide uppercut thing? Tempest Strike? Yeah. Like, I, I haven't seen anyone use that effectively yet, but also I haven't unlocked this subclass, so I don't even know how it works. Uh, a lot of players state that they don't like it because it doesn't one hit kill hmm. compared to say, you know, warlocks and Titans. They have a, a one hit knockout ability. Mm-hmm. I believe Tempest Strike does around 125 to 130 damage, which I believe only takes out the shield. So you have to at least melee them once just to kill them. Uh, what I've been doing in terms of my play style, uh, I'm sure if you've seen it too, where I will run slide, either use Tempest Strike and uh, snipe them in the body to kill them or body, uh, snipe them in the body and then Tempest Strike to kill them. I love I love that snipers are low key shotguns if you want them to be. <laughs> it's still my favorite thing. Right, well, we we got to talk about snipers, but bef- before we move on, I mean, so okay, so the other perks we've got lightning weave, so you've got that uh, weapon reload speed, sure, nice to have. Um, but talk about this ebb and flow one because this one, I when I first read this, I thought this seems complicated. This seems like a PVE thing. Is this something that you're you're using or like it happens, but you're not going for it? Like what's the role of ebb and flow in PvP? Um, so ebb and flow, it hits a target with an arc ability, ability to electrify them. Um, and then if I remember correctly, the melee disorients the enemy and grants grenade, melee, and dodge energy. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> is it great? Honestly, I don't really notice it, but... From what I've seen so far, when I kill other guardians with my um, arc abilities like Tempest Strike or um, my super, I've noticed that my abilities uh, charge up a lot faster. So you're not you're not playing for ebb and flow, but you'll just take the free grenade if it if it happens to happen. Yep, if it's there, I'll use it. If it's not, I won't use it. But speaking of lightning wave. <laughs> Sounded like you didn't like it, bro. Well, it just, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it doesn't seem like uh, it's going to be a real game changer. So I'm like, fast reload's nice, but like, you got your dodge for that, too. I mean, that helps. Like, I don't know, sell me on it. What, you like it? I love it. So, right, it provides, what, faster reloads after melee hits? For me, I, I love the speed. I mean, yeah, you have to dodge, but what if that's on cooldown? Sure. You can use Lightning Weave to help you out, especially in situations where maybe it's a one versus two, one versus three. Um, you can use a dodge that will help, but lightning weave that can back you up as well. So it's like another having another card in hand to play that might help you dominate the playing field. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, so now I got to wonder what exotic are you going to be pairing this with? Um, I've been using a lot of the ace of spades, and in terms of energy weapon, legendary, the fake cries foul. Okay, as a cyber. What about a what about for armor exotic? Stompy, Stompy, yeah. I just love the speed. I feel like you've had those <laughs> locked on your hunter for a year at least, at least since I've known you. <laughs> Never taken them off. <laughs> I haven't washed them either. <laughs> Broken in. Broken in. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the Stompy is like, I know it's all about the jump, you know, and, and hunters love having more hang time, but it gives it an increased like sprint and slide speed, doesn't it? Yep. It busts your sprint, slide, and jumping. Yeah. So the slide ties right into what you were saying about the. You know, the the push into enemies, pop your super and, and all that sort of thing. So it sort of seems to play right to all the reasons you like it. Yeah. Just love the speed. And attack faster, kill faster. What what jumper are you using? Strafe jump? Uh the double jump. Double jump, yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 Well, as I as I just mentioned, I feel like you know, sometimes we talk to players who are use whatever, uh, you know, we had just had TV on who's like, you know, I'll figure out how sidearms work and use fusions. <laughs> but uh, there is something to say for players that use the same thing and get really good at it. I feel like if, you know, you fall into that second ca- category and you, you use the same thing. So what about your loadout do you like? 
And first of all, what is it? Like my perfect loadout for primary, it's either going to be Dire Promise or Ace of Spades. Are you still using Dire Promise in your two? Here and here and there, yeah. I find it. <laughs> I, I just love it. Like, I feel yeah. like I can hit uh, the headshots a lot easier than Ace of Spades for some reason. And you mentioned the Fade Cries Foul. What role? What roles on that one? And and why are you? You know, you've you've been a sniper for a while. What sort of stands out to you? Snapshot sights. Gotta have that for faster time to aim down sights. Um, Outlaw. Every time I land that precision shot, I just love the reload time. <laughs> just love the speed. And Icarus Grip <laughs> for accuracy while airborne. That seems like a kind of unusual choice for a sniper rifle, but um, you use your sniper rifle in interesting ways. I mean, like, I think most of us think like, okay, I'm going to put on a sniper rifle and, oh, I got a good corner here. I'm going to like scope down this lane and hope somebody walks out. But that's not it, right? Like there's other things you can do with a sniper rifle. Yep. Plenty of things. Um, you can use it like a shotgun, but you can't, you know, one shot to the body and kill him like a shotgun or like headshot. Um, but you can sh- one shot to the body and melee, uh, use Tempest Strike, use an arc bolt to kill him after. So there's plenty of different combos that you can utilize to defeat them. Okay, so so explain the sniper rifle as a shotgun thing. Because like I've done it a couple of times. I was like, oh, that's fun. But that's different than, you know, having it as something that you can rely on or, or try and use. Like, how does it work? Are you aiming for center of mass? Like, what's what's that situation look like? So I'm pretty much running in, sliding, quick scope or no scope. And if I land that body shot, I'm going to either use Tempest Strike right away uh, melee, or if I have a grenade, like an arc boat, I'll use an arc boat. Would you challenge a shotgunner with this, or are you going to be using it in situations where you know you've got the drop on someone? All the time. <laughs> Just go for All it. All the time. I'm not scared. Even supers, I'm going to go for it. Does it work? Yeah. I, um, against supers? Uh, sure. Sometimes? <laughs> yeah, sometimes here and there. Yeah, well, I do miss um, where you can snipe them in the head when they're in the super to kill them. That's tough. I do miss a lot of that, yeah. Because that, that feeling, when they pop their super and they're coming at you, but you snipe them in the, in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just their... That greatest feeling. Oh, I miss <sighs> it. <laughs> 10% health and they still run at you and still throw a hammer. Right? Oh, that is one of the worst feelings. Ken, so are you... Uh, taking your same loadouts into something like Gambit? I am actually, yeah. Um, but in terms of my primary, I'm using Ace of Spades. It's a good one. I haven't tried Malfeasance since yet, though. It's really good now that it's been changed. <laughs> Was it after the update? Yeah. Nice. So, I gotta definitely try that me out. And, uh, me and Kensta here or got our meatball together. The first hey. meatball. We shared it. Oh, yeah. You always remember. <laughs> yeah. It was a solid... Meatball. It's Lady in the Tramp yeah. Lady in the Tramp scenario. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, yes, everybody remembers their first meatball. So, so I, well, let me ask. I mean, you're using hand cannons, you're using sniper rifles. Are, are you still rocking a controller or have you switched over to mouse and keyboard? When Destiny 2 came out for PC, it was all strictly mouse and keyboard. Is that like, did you have that comfort from playing Counter-Strike or did you feel like you were sort of starting over? Counter-Strike, the comfort yeah. of it. Do you think, I mean, do you think these same play styles are viable on a controller in D2? Or is it, are you better off picking a gun that, you know, you can hold down the trigger on? I guess it really depends on how comfortable you feel with the mouse and keyboard mm-hmm. versus a controller. Uh, if I remember correctly, Bones was on a controller for a while and then he's decided to swap over to mouse and keyboard. Yep. Eventually I got it, got it together. <laughs> Pull the trigger. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I, it feels like it's it's a lot smoother. It's easier. I have more buttons to push versus the controller. Yeah, got a lot of buttons. Yeah, a lot of buttons. Well, okay. Do you do you, do you have any uh, key binds that sort of would be uh, atypical or unusual, or do you use a kind of default setting setup? So whenever I play any FPS shooter, it's all default. I don't really change anything. Hmm. Besides. So you- Actually, the only game that I changed was Black Ops. Um, I changed it to make it similar to uh, Destiny 2, <laughs> where you're sliding. <laughs> That's what scene, I would do. <laughs> I changed it to control. <laughs> so you're not like me who moused like, or mapped like seven buttons to their weird mouse and only nope. uses <laughs> WASD <laughs> on the left hand. <laughs> it was the only way I was going to learn. <laughs> 
Well, I wanted to shift over to a more, you know, conceptual stuff. We've talked about loadout and like, you know, your personal 1v1 strategy. Uh, but let's talk about teamwork, competitive play and that sort of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we just learned officially that uh, the competitive season is over November 27th, right? So people are going to be jumping back into the comp or or maybe trying it out for the first time to get that Luna's. Uh, so what are some of the really crucial things that you feel are important when playing with other people and gelling as a team? The main key point would be communication. Always talk and communicate. If if you die, uh, communicate no matter what. If you die, don't mm-hmm. complain. It's like, oh my God, he killed him with the shotgun. We don't want that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to get that here and there. Um, communication is key towards, you know, of, towards a win, a W. Uh, another thing is be non-toxic towards your team members, mm. um, especially in comp. Cause if you're in toxic, it's going to affect everyone. It's going to affect everyone's morale and their will to win, which could then provide what poor results. Um, <clears throat> in terms of like dealing with a non-toxic member, confront them it's better to tell the truth or else it, the same thing's going to keep on happening well so yeah i mean there, there's a lot of <laughs> lot of ground covered there i mean i think one thing i definitely notice more is if i'm like i'm mostly a solo queue player if i'm playing by myself then it's like yeah win or lose it's fine like i'm gonna win more than i lose whatever i'm going for i'll eventually get there and then as soon as it's in like a team-based situation, I don't see myself like, I don't really get down on other players for like, oh, you know, you, you messed this up or you didn't do this. But you can definitely feel that pressure too, right? Like, and it's tough to not go like, oh man, sorry I died. Like, <laughs> or that noise apparently I make every time I die. When, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want to hear it? I don't know. Let's, let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh, what? It's <laughs> just a little, oh. It's a little snort. Yeah, it's a little every time. Ground. It's, it's quiet. It's subtle. Yeah, but it's like like there's there's that that pressure side to it of like I don't want to let my team down. That I just can't you know I can't be quite as sort of happy go lucky as I am when there's no one dependent on me. I was like play rumble, I guess. But yeah, practice. Have your own playstyle and see what fits you when you're slaying in the crucible. And a key tip would be like record. And rewatch your gameplay. Yep. See what you did wrong and what you could do better. So let's, I mean, I want to dig into all of these things. Let's start with communication. And you know, this let's say let's say you're playing like countdown or something, right? Like there's a clear kind of pacing to what's happening there. Talk me through like what sort of things, I mean, how should you be communicating over the course of a round of countdown? If you see something on your radar, call it out. Um, that could definitely help the whole entire team. If you know that they're rushing in one area, call it out as well. So it's all about call outs. And if you don't know what the call outs are, they're right under your radar. So you could say that, um, but you could also say mid, at least it gives someone an idea on where they are. So if you say left side, we can look left. They could be there. If you say right, they could be on the right side, mid, they're mid. As long as you're saying something, it's going to help your teammates, um, hopefully achieve that victory. Yeah, I think it's kind of under, un, what is the word? Uh, underestimated how helpful just some very generic info can be. And I think it gets tough, especially when people are trying to get into comp and trying to understand like someone might call out rubble on dead cliffs and not know what that means. But like, you know, on my X or or they're in spawn or two on B. I feel like I said that a lot if I die and, I'm getting swarmed or something like that. I'll, I'll try to give the amount because at least knowing there's four people in the room, it's still just a little red blip. If there's one person, it's a red blip. So I'll try to say there's three or four before my teammate decides to rush in and then just gets team shotted. But yeah, just like basic info can be so helpful sometimes. Yeah, definitely. I remember when I played with Bones um, in Burning Shrine in I think year one, mm-hmm. he said underneath. <laughs> yeah yeah you get it that, that helped <laughs> underneath yeah. Yeah. underneath I was like well, uh, um, underneath we're inside so they're outside <laughs> mid okay underneath mid gotcha yeah and plus we didn't have radar back then so yeah like, g- basic generic call outs were like all we could do for a while 
and, and it helped. It helped us win the round. So there's like that kind of call out of like, hey, there's some people at this spot. There's this many of them. Um, how do you feel about like there's there's other kinds of call outs, right? Like there's the one like the sort of coordination call outs where like somebody is shot calling. They're saying, you know, hold off, not yet push or, you know, let, let's all go in there at the same time and get them like kind of that sort of stuff. Do you find that there's a need for that or that kind of as players get better, they kind of know what to do? Um, as they get better, they kind of tend to know what to do, know where everything is. Um, and another thing is you have to find out if the people you're playing with can adapt with your play style as well. What do you mean by that? Like give an example. Like for example, if you're playing with people that are way too aggressive and you're just defensive, that could, how should I put it? Um, yeah, well, like I just think about like playing with like Keen Koala, and I would say, yeah, normally I'm a somewhat defensive player, and then anytime I play with Keen, it's like never stop moving forward, just like keep that pressure up. And then not only if I don't keep up with him, it's like I'm missing the action, but also he's getting into trouble because I'm not behind him to help back him up or like tag in for him. Yeah, yeah. So like when you're communicating, like so, say if uh, I'm in a match with. Bones, Keen, or whatever. And I call out, all right, Keen, follow me. Bones and say Swain, take the right side, and Keen, I will take the left. As long as we're constantly communicating with each other and working, working together and staying in one area instead of going off alone, I think that is the play style that would bring um, the victory together for the entire team. Because if you have someone that doesn't listen, or if they go <laughs> if they go their own way, that means their players their play styles don't match together. So maybe you you can put two aggressive players together and maybe two defensive players together. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean that that comes up so often in the uh, the comp setting too, where you get rounds and you call out a play at the start of the round and. Sometimes it can be so simple, like two go right, two go left. But you know, if one person goes left and kind of slowly crosses to the other side or takes a peek at a few lanes and the other person can skate their way to the other side of the map, it's still not gelling perfectly. Yeah. I mean, if you guys don't gel together, then things won't work out correctly. Yeah, I learned recently, thanks to uh, the clan known as Adept, I did a little boot camp that I am a control player which I found very enlightening and helpful to know because, well, I mean, I can play aggressive if needed, but I like to be in the center, kind of checking both sides, being able to flank and necessary and like send it kind of float and kind of be there to support versus I will push in and start the conflict where there's players who are very good at that. And then once I realized there's like a term for that and like my own play style was that, it made a lot of things make sense and also made me probably like be more helpful uh, in my call outs and at least, you know, uh, explain what I'm doing so that players who are aggressive or speed skaters and stuff like that aren't going to assume I'm right behind them because sometimes they will. And then I feel bad. Kensta, how would you describe your play style? Aggressive most of the time. Uh, I like to run in and snipe them either in the face or in the body and then <laughs> melee them. I'm starting to sense a trend here. <laughs> you like what you like. Um, but I do like the, uh, the, um, the flicks. Sure. So if you're playing, you know, defensively or, and you want to snipe that lane. Once I pick the lane, I like to do that flick where hopefully I'll land that precision head shot. And it just, it just makes me, Happy, it's very fun and exciting at the same time. Mm-hmm. So d- describe the mechanics of that. How, how, how did, like, what specifically are you doing? How does that work? Um, so I'm, I'm going to quickly, so it's like the start of the round, I'm going to quickly peek a lane that I know that someone might peek. And once I peek really quick, I'm going to flick, when I see them, I'm going to flick my mouse and hit fire. And hopefully that will land a precision has shot. And you just trust with the, the aim assist or whatever that it's just going to, it's all going to 
happen at the right time, it works. Yep. Yep. Oh, beautiful thing. Just it's making place happen. Of like, you know, the helmet that I have, uh, the prodigal, prodigal mask has snipe, sniper rifle targeting, which improves like target, target acquisition, accuracy, and aim down sights. Mm-hmm. So that does help me a lot as well. Interesting. Um, before we moved on from the callouts, there's one I wanted to, one other type I want to ask about. And this is one that I have like mixed feelings on, but that's like the, the status type callouts of like, oh, he's weak or I'm weak. I need to fall back or, you know, tagged with grenades or you got blinded or whatever. Like, I think sometimes it feels like those can be more trouble than they're worth a lot of the time. I mean, what's your, I say, what's your stance on those or like, which do you call out and which do you just are just part of regular gameplay that aren't worth taking up a bunch of air for? Um, I would say absolute. I think that's what most players would say mm-hmm. when the enemies are weak and that's all that's needed. Maybe you'd say absolute and call them, let your teammates know where they are. Makes sense. Simple. Yeah. And that was easy to do because you can always know where you are. You don't have to know where the enemies are. <laughs> like if you die, um, enemies absolute, absolute, just let your teammates know that they're maybe near your orb, near your ghost. Makes sense. Um, all right. Well, we were, as Bones mentioned earlier, we are, uh, I don't say running out of time, but the end is in sight for this, this competitive season. So folks who are on that grind or maybe wondering if they've got time to, to start the grind. I mean, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, folks. Yeah. two weeks, not sure how, <laughs> you know, well, you, you give them a shot, you know, it's worth it. But, um, I guess what would you say for players who are getting into the comp playlist for the first time and so are, you know, maybe experiencing game modes that are unfamiliar or just like people who are, you know, I know when I get, I'm playing a ton of quick play, you know, you start to think in a quick play kind of mindset where, you know, you, there's lots of people and you just run until you find red and go big. I mean, what, what advice would you give for someone who's kind of getting their start in the competitive playlist? Get a bunch of your friends in a four versus four situation and hop into a private server. Um, get to know the game modes, the areas where you can peek, and get to know the callouts. And your ma- and having map awareness helps as well. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what what does that mean in that case? Like, what is map awareness? Like, know where you are, um, know where to peek, and know which areas where you can fall off and die. <laughs> <laughs> Important advice right there. That, like that happened to me a lot of times. Yeah, underneath. <laughs> It's important to know that. (laughs) And yeah, when people say, well, what if I don't have seven friends? Well, we've already said everyone's telling you don't go into comp solo, folks. Um, Actually, I I am saying go into comp solo. No, (laughs) don't listen to birds. (laughs) It's fine. Like, look, (laughs) I did it. It's fine. fine. I did. I got to, I got to 2200. I had probably 75% solo. I don't recommend it. Listen to me. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about, but okay. okay. Well, speaking of finding friends, <laughs> if you're maybe you can hop into a comp match, um, ask them to see if you can play with them. Maybe they're all solos. Yeah, you can all sure. together. Yeah, you, I've definitely had those those matches where it's in solo queue, but it's like, wow, we're all we're all playing together right now. I know, like in other games, they have that ability of like, do you want to keep playing with this same group? And you can all hit that button at the end. I wish they had something like that because. Yeah, sometimes you meet perfect strangers who are on the, the same wavelength. Yeah. It's kind of like a Overwatch, right? Yeah. yeah. If you guys have Overwatch, yeah. You, you can say it. If I say it, I got to put a dollar in the in the Overwatch jar. So. Oh, we cashed <laughs> that in already. We donated that whole jar to charity. Yeah. We can talk about Overwatch. It's been well, years. Speaking of charity, um, I mean, I have Venmo. You want me to donate you a dollar? <laughs> you guys got Venmo? Uh, <laughs> yeah, just give give us a yeah, dollar right? for every time we. I'll give you a dollar for saying Overwatch. Oh, that's two dollars. Yeah, <laughs> keep it up, man. Make ten. Um, <laughs> that's what we need. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to follow up on one other thing you said. You covered a lot of ground very quickly. Um, you talked about going back and watching your gameplay, and that's I mean that's something we've been talking about on the show for a long time. I know personally, I've benefited from it a lot of times, but. I've also heard a lot of people say like, I don't like, what am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing right now? Like, give me, just give me some examples. Like if you're watching your gameplay back, what are the kinds of things that you see that, that 
you know, you recognize a mistake or you recognize an opportunity to do something different? Um, sniping in one area where I guess sometimes I'll get too cocky and I'll stay in the same spot. Sure. Um, and then while I'll kill the opposing player multiple times in comp, I decided to stay in the same spot again. And finally they figured out what I'm doing. So they would eventually quickly peek and snipe me in the face. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's always good to know like what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. Um, there are a lot of things that I've done wrong, like popping my super in front of four people and they're ready just to melt me down from a far away. Yeah. It's very interesting how glaring some things like that can be like, Oh, I've, you know, you can't control it while you're watching your footage. You're like I've been standing in the same spot for five minutes and it feels <laughs> like ages when you're watching, but it wasn't in the moment. Yeah. It's like, there's this one comp match where we were dominating this team five and zero, oh, and we lost six to five. So I saved it and I noticed what I did wrong was popping my super in front of them when they're well, not in front of them, but from far away in the area where I got stuck and they just melted me and that just mm-hmm. changed everything. And they got their supers up and for each round they used their super, they won. Let me ask, do you ever have a situation where like, let's say you're in comp, the entire team or like three people on the other team have their supers up and your team doesn't have any, I mean, Do you ever, like, and let's say it's, you know, countdown or survival, something round-based. Do you ever intentionally throw around and go, like, let's just bait out as many supers as we can. They're probably going to win this one. But, um, you know, we can give them one if it means going into the next round clean. Or are you trying to win every round? We're trying to win every round. Um, We try to find ways to bait those supers out just to win the round. Sure. we all, another thing is we always have maybe some sort of uh, a different class in the group, such as the Titan, to use to suppress their, to use a suppressor grenade to suppress their supers. Mm-hmm. So different tactics to hopefully uh, defeat the team. Well, so let me ask, I mean, that's, that's a question there. So you're glued to your arc strider and your sniper rifle. Um, if you could like assemble a team that worked well around you, what do you what are you gonna have? What do you what do you want in there with you? Uh, Sentinel Titan, another Hunter, oh. preferably another Ox Strider, actually. So him and I would be buddies. <laughs> sure, <laughs> good to have a friend. <laughs> you wouldn't want to have. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to have a blade barrage. Four blade barrages. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, is there is there synergy with having two Ox Striders? I feel that it's a lot more faster. When we have two Ox Riders, we have that mobility sure. to either attack quicker or run away from um, the opposing enemy when they pop the super. Sure. Mm. I feel like we can turn corners a lot quicker too. Well, I mean, especially with the, the Stompies on. Um, do you, do you want to have a Warlock on your team or does it matter? Eh, it doesn't matter. Warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ouch. Make an enemy. That's going to be the sound bite. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah. Uh, those Nova Warps are going to be like a little pissed off. Oh, yeah. They get to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. This has been good. But I wanted, I was going to say one thing I would love to highlight that you mentioned, um, you know, and, and, I, and I know that a lot of people are literally today thinking like, I got to start my comp grind. Um, but you know, the toxicity and stuff, it's, it's not always just like pure anger, like literally like tilt rage, but you know, you mentioned like, sometimes you just go like, Oh, shotguns and stuff like that. And I think that's like such a good thing that you pointed out that it's, it can be super minor, but it's just like, that's less helpful um, in that moment than saying, you know, he's on B or something like that. Um, and, and you said that, you know, you can confront it. And I, and I think you, you don't mean necessarily, you know, stop complaining or something, yelling at someone. But uh, I don't often hear a lot of players addressing that and to say that, like, look, you can address that and talk to your teammate right then uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way. Uh, so I think that's really important because I think that's often confused. You don't just have to kick them off your team because someone is tilting, <laughs> but you can say like, hey, man, we got this. And I think that's a really good uh, thing to remember for everyone going into comp. Uh, for the next two weeks. Sometimes it just takes yep. uh, a good teammate that's uh, 
receptive to that sort of type of thing. And the best that for at least from my experiences, like between matches to just kind of be like, Hey, didn't work that time. Kind of calm, yeah. calmly when you're not in the moment because <laughs> things do get heated. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to move on, stay positive and play the game. Try your best to win. And if anything, try to teach others because we all know, so we all know something that others don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Ken well said. said, all right, where can people find you if they want to see more of your sick arc strider plays? <laughs> <laughs> they can find me on twitch.tv slash Kensta. I also have a Twitter. Uh, it is hey, as in hey, <laughs> Kensta. You just dropped a montage too. Yes, sir. Oh, just yeah. Just the montage. Ooh, go check so it out. Feel free everyone. to check it out. Is that on YouTube? Yes, it's on YouTube. Uh, if you search Kensta, it should definitely show up. If not, message me. DM me. DMs are open. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming on the show. No, thank you guys for the invite, and I really appreciate it. You guys are freaking amazing. Oh, a long time coming. Oh. Hey, Kensta, I, I, I wanted to ask. Do you remember, I think I loaded into <laughs> a lobby with you. It was on Javelin. Uh, we were on A side, I think, waiting for the power. We both ran up, but I got there closer, and then I pulled out the the cell phone emoji with my finger up, and I think you smacked me and ran away. You remember, <laughs> you remember that? Does that sound like you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes okay. I, I do that. Maybe. I, I want to say no. I put the. I want to say I put that power to good use, but uh, I'm thinking like, oh, this is Kensta. We're gonna have him on the show in a bit. I hope this is not what he remembers me <laughs> for. As long as you put it to good I use, did. I did <laughs> through those grenades. <laughs> I like how it's revealed the birds is just that guy sliding into power and pushing. I don't push off people, but I do pop the, the hold on emoji just just so they know. Wait, were okay. you the one that pushed me off the power? No, <laughs> I would never. <laughs> no, I think I remember no. now. Actually, no, bullshit, man, bullshit. I was standing I there. I was there first, and then I was there first. You get, you play Titan. Uh, I. I may have made yeah. it on a Titan at the time. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think you showed her charge me off. Anyway, Kensta, Kensta, great having me on the show. So great. So sorry that we're out of time. Oh, no, it's <laughs> Mike cut out. Wow. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Hello, hello. You guys here? He hello? just left the Discord channel. Weird. <laughs> Is this really happening? <laughs> ah, what Love a swell dude. time. Ah, definitely that thing at the end there. That was, that was, <laughs> I don't think his, his memory is not great. He's a confused young man, but we love him. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ken and I actually played a lot for, uh, for a good portion of my Claymore grind, and it was, it was very fun sort of getting into the hang of things and knowing we could actually make some real real headway because back then it was a scary uh, undertaking so I'm excited to keep going I got two weeks left but I think I can make it I just gotta get back in there baby let's go it's really it really is so much different when you have someone as level headed as Kent's to play with it's almost like yeah. too much fun <laughs> just feel you just feel good about each game so find yourself your own Kent's to, uh in discord discord.gg slash crucible radio join wow yeah, there you go. Look at that. It's a beautiful segue switch. Holy cow. I thought it was pronounced segui. 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 <laughs> Ew. Pretty sure it's... That's what all the people on Twitter are saying, right? Segui? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> CrucibleRadio.com. That's my segue. Bye. Later.
What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.